Okay, so welcome back to another video on the math channel. Um, in this video, we're going to be looking at summing an arithmetic series. So by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to establish and, <coughs> and use the formulae for the sum of the first n terms of an AP. So let's have a look at the first bit. Finding the sum of the first n terms of an AP, where we know the last term. So here, let's have a look at an investigation. How would we find the answer to the first six terms of this AP? 5 plus 15 plus 25 plus 35 plus 45 plus 55. There's six terms here. How would you find the answer to that? Maybe pause the video, have a go with it yourselves, and then I'll go through this. Okay, so what I would do is, on the sum of the first six terms, I might write it out. I might just write this as it is. 5 plus 15, 25, 35, 45, and 55. And I could actually reverse that. I can say that the sum of the first six terms is actually 50, 55 plus 45 plus 35, 25, 15, and 5. Because they're exactly the same thing. Now, if I were to add them together, then two lots of the sum of the first six numbers will be 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus 60, because we can see that they actually pair up with one another. And those are to 60. And therefore, the sum of the first six numbers will just be six lots of 60 we just need to divide it by 2. Okay, 6 times 60, but just, we just need to divide it by 2. So from doing that, we can actually create a formula to find the sum of the first n terms of an AP. Here, n is 6. Okay, there are 6 terms. And because we did this, 5 and 55 adds to 60, 15 and 45 also adds to 60, 25 and 35 also adds to 60, Technically, there are three pairs of 60. Or we take the number of terms there are and halve it to work out how many pairs there are. So there's technically three pairs of 60. So the formula that we could create to find the sum of the first n terms of an AP is the sum of the first n terms is equal to the number of terms divided by 2. And then we can just add the first term and the last term. So just remember, when we were looking at t sub n, the nth term of an AP, is a plus n minus 1d. a is what we use for the first term. So here, we've got a is the first term. We have l being the last term. And we have n being the number of terms. So if we look back at this example up here, we can see that the first term is 5. Oops. First term is 5. Last term is 55. Just add them together, that's 60. And then we can times it by how, um, how many pairs of those terms there are. So the number of terms, 6, divided by 2, there's 3 pairs of those terms. That will add to 60. All right. Pause the video, have a go with this question, find the sum of an integer uh, of all the integers from 100 to 200 inclusive. Okay, so from here we can see, let me write down the formula because you need to get used to this formula. The sum of all the n, n or the sum of the n terms is equal to um, n on 2 times a plus l. A is the first term, which is 100. L is the last term, which is 200 in this case. But how many numbers are there from 100 to 200? It's not 100. It's actually 101. If I were to ask you, uh, how many numbers are there from 1 to 10? It's not 9. I know you're thinking uh, 10 minus 1 is 9. But it's actually 10 minus 1 plus 1. There's actually 10 numbers. So for this one, 
it's actually 200 minus 100, but we need to plus 1. That's why it's 101. So the sum of the, of the integers, the 101 integers, is 101 over 2 times 100 plus 200, which is equal to 15,150. Okay, so that formula, this formula here, is very useful when we have the last term. But what if we don't have the last term? Let's have a look at the second part of this lesson. Finding the sum of the first n terms of an AP when we don't know the last term. So if we don't know the last term, what can we replace it with? Well, usually we need to think about, you know, the the last term is usually the nth term. And because we know that the formula for the nth term is a plus n minus 1d, technically we could replace, sorry, we could replace all this, replace l with all of that. So what would this look like? The sum of the first n terms is equal to half n, or n on 2. I'm just going to write n on 2 because I like that. A plus L, but L is all of this, so I'm just going to write all of that. And I'm just going to clean this up, so the sum of the first n terms is n on 2, bracket 2A plus n minus 1D. So, if we don't know what the last term is, we will use this formula, if we have, if we know the difference, know the common difference, and don't know the last term. Okay, so these two formulas are important. We use the one that I'm highlighting right now when we know the last term. And we use this one when we don't know the last term. So let's have a look at some examples. I'll do the first one and then I'll get you to pause the video and have a go with question B. Find the sum of the first 10 terms of this AP, 100 plus 94 plus 88 plus 82, etc. So, sum of the first n terms, I'm just going to write the formula because we need to get used to it is n onto 2a plus n minus 1d. And I'm writing that down because I don't know what the last term is. I don't know what the tenth term is, to be exact. Okay, so I'm looking at this formula and I'm thinking, okay, I need n, I know n is 10 because I need the sum of the first 10 terms. a is 100 according to this um, AP, and I need D as well, and according to this, I can work out D, D is minus 6. Okay, 100 minus 94 is, well, 94 minus 100 is minus 6, so it's going down by 6. So the sum of the first 10 terms is therefore equal to 10 over 2, which is 5, times 2 times A, or 2 times 100, which is 200, plus N minus 1, remember this is n, okay, this sub underneath um, the s, that's n, so 10 minus 1 is 9, times minus 6. And when we put that in our calculator, we will get an answer of 730. Okay, pause the video, have a go with question b. Okay, so for this question, everything is the same except for the number of terms. Because it's asking us to work out the sum of the first 41 terms, n is 41 instead of 10. So the sum of the first 41 terms is 41 on 2, okay, n on 2, times 200 again, plus 9 times, oh sorry, not 9, n is 41, so n minus 1 is 40, times minus 6. When we put that in the calculator, we get an answer of negative 820. 
Right. <clears throat> Let's have a look at how to find um, expressions and solve problems that are related to this. Find an expression for the sum, s sub n, of n terms of the series 40 plus 37 plus 34 plus etc. So because it says sum, I know I need to think about the formula. So I'm going to write down a formula. And I don't know the last term, in fact it's n. So instead of using a plus l, I'm going to use the difference one. So n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1. According to this question, we don't know what n is, so I'm just going to leave that. But we do know that a is 40, that's the first term. And we know that the common difference is minus 3. Okay, because 40 minus 3 is 37, 37 minus 3 is 34. So it's a common difference of minus 3. So the sum of the first n terms is n on 2 times 2 lots of 40, which is 80 plus n minus 1 times d, which is minus 3, except that looks weird, so I'm just going to put the minus 3 at the front. And because it's plus minus, we don't really need that plus. Okay, I'm going to expand the brackets here, and then simplify the big brackets um, to get my final answer. So s sub n is equal to n on 2, 80 minus 3n plus 3, and this will just become n on 2 bracket 83 minus 3n, and that's it. Alright, let's have a look at question B. The sum of the first 10 terms of an AP is 0, and the sum of the first and second terms is 24. Find the first three terms. Okay. So we need to break this down. The sum of the first 10 terms of an AP is 0. So I'm just going to write that in orange. Sum of the first 10 terms is going to be n on 2, or 10 on 2, which is 5, bracket 2a, plus n minus 1d. This is n, remember? So 9d. And the sum of those is equal to 0. I'm going to simplify this to make it easy. I'm going to divide both sides by 5 to get 2a plus 9d is equal to 0. The sum of the first and second terms is 24. So I'll do that in green. The sum of the first two terms is n on 2, or 2 on 2, which is just 1, bracket 2a plus n minus 1, remember this is n now, so 2 minus 1 is just 1, 1d. Okay, so looks like I don't really need that at all. Now, we've got two unknowns, so we need to solve this simultaneously. We've got 2a plus 9d is equal to 0. And we've got 2a plus d is equal to what? Well, according to the question, it's equal to 24. So I'm just going to write equals 24 here, as well as down here. And now we can solve this simultaneously. We can eliminate a because they both have the same co coefficient of 2. So we're going to subtract. And so 9d minus d is 8d. And 0 minus 24 is negative 24. Therefore, d is equal to negative 3. And now I'm going to substitute that back into any one of these to work out a as well. So I'm going to substitute it back into this, because that's nice and easy. So 2a minus 3 is equal to 24. Or 2a is equal to 27. So a is equal to 13.5. Okay, 27 on 2, which is 13.5. So the question now says, find the first three terms. So term 1 is 13.5. The second term is going to be 3 less than that, because the common difference is 3, negative 3. So that's 10.5. And the third term is 7.5. Okay, so if we were to actually write out the um, AP, or the 
um, arithmetic series in this case, we would say it's 13.5 plus 10.5 plus 7.5 plus etc. Okay, question C. Eva evaluate 9 plus 14 plus 19 plus etc. all the way up to 224. How are we going to do this? So, we know that um, we need to find the sum of this. So, sum of n terms, because we don't know how many terms there are, is n onto bracket 2a, a is 9, so 18, plus n minus 1d times d, and d here is 5. I'll just put a 5 at the front instead of at the end. So it seems like we need to know what n is in order to work out the sum of these numbers. Because we usually refer to the nth term as like the last term, we can assume that this last term 224 is like saying it's the nth term. So I'm going to need to remember my formula uh, for the nth term. The nth term is equal to a plus n minus 1d. And because the nth term is the last term, here the last term is 224, so I'm just going to make that equal to 224. We know a is 9, and we know d is 5, so I'm just going to put the 5 at the front, and we know that it equals to 224, and now this just becomes a normal equation for us to solve. So I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides, and that gives me 215. I'm going to divide both sides by 5. That gives me 43. And I'm going to add 1 to both sides to get n, which is 44. What that means is there are 44 terms between 9 and 224 that goes up by 5. Okay, so from 9 to 224, there are 44 terms, or you can think about it as 224 is the 44th term in this sequence. So the sum of the first 44 terms will be 44 out of uh, over 2 times 18 plus 5 times 44 minus 1 is 43. And when we put that in our calculator, we get 5126. Question D. For what value of n is the sum of the first n terms of 2 plus 11 plus 20 plus etc. equal to 618? So the sum of some n terms is going to equal to 618. I'm just going to write the formula. n on 2 times 2a plus n minus 1d. And I'm doing this because I don't have the last term, right? I don't know what the last term is for this sequence. So that when they add together, they add 618. So I'm going to use this formula, not the a plus l one. Okay, so according to this, a is 2. And d is 9. So let's just put that in. 618 is equal to n on 2 times 2 times a, which is 4, plus 9 lots of n minus 1. I'm going to get rid of this fraction over here by multiplying both sides by 2. 6, 18 times 2 is 1, 2, 3, 6. n bracket 4 plus, I'm just going to expand this out, 9n minus 9, which is also 9n minus 5, so I'm just going to replace that with 9n minus 5. And then I'm going to expand these brackets. 12, 36 is equal to 9n squared minus 5n. Because n squared is positive, I want to leave everything on this side as it is. I'm, I want to move that to the other side and make it equal to 0. So 0 is equal to 9n squared minus 5n minus 12, 36. And now I've got a non-monic that I need to factorize. 
So to factorize nonmonics, we're going to multiply this term and this term. And so when we multiply them, the product is equal to negative 11124. And the sum will be negative 5. The sum of the two factors will be negative 5. So what are the factors? So now I'm just going to do a little bit of guess and check. I've got my negative 11124, and I'm just going to divide maybe by like 100. And so here I've got a difference of about 11. 100 and negative one, one, uh, neg uh, 100 and 111, about a difference of 11. So I know it needs to be more than 100, and let's say 102. Okay, so now that's the difference is 7. I need a difference of 5. So let's try 103. Good, that's exactly a difference of 5. So 103 and 108. I know it's going to be these two numbers. I just need to know which one's negative. And because the sum is negative, the sum of the two numbers is negative, the bigger number needs to be negative. Because 108 is bigger than 103, this one needs to be negative. So let's factorize this now. Because of the 9n squared, I'm going to be using 9n plus 103. 9n minus 108 all over 9. This becomes 9n plus 103. I'm going to factorize out a 9 from this one. That leaves me with n minus 12 all over 9, and they cancel each other out. So 0 is equal to... 9n plus 103 times 9, oh sorry, times n minus 12. And using the null factor law, we therefore know that n is equal to negative 103 over 9 or positive 12. But we can't have a negative term, as in um, n can't be negative, therefore it has to be 12 or 12 terms. Okay, we need the first 12 terms of this AP so that when we add them together, it will add to 680. Okay. Let's have a look at question E. The sixth term of an AP is 23, and the sum of the first 10 terms is 210. Find the sum of the first 20 terms. So you need to be careful with this. Okay, be careful with the wording. This says the sixth term of an AP is 23. So we need to be thinking about our sixth term. I need to be thinking nth term, which is a plus n minus 1d. So the sixth term is a plus or n minus 1 will be 5d. Okay, because remember this is n. And that is equal to 23. Okay, so just remember that. Oops. Okay, a common mistake that students make is they write, oh, the sixth term is 23, which is a equal to a plus 22d. They, they made the mistake thinking that this is n. So n minus 1, they think is 22. But this is n. So just be careful with that. Right, uh, let's use blue. The sum of the first 10 terms is 210. So I need to use the sum formula. The sum of the first 10 terms, so the sum of the nth term, of the first n terms, is n on to 2a plus n minus 1d. So the sum of the first 10 terms is 10 on 2, which is 5, times 2a plus 9d, which is equal to 210. I'm going to clean this up by dividing both sides by 5, because I can see that they're both divisible by 5. So that gives me 2a plus 9d is equal to 42. And now I can use these two equations and solve them simultaneously. However, 
none of them have none of the um, variables a or d have a common coefficient so I might multiply this one multiply this one by 2 so that I'll get 2a and then I can eliminate a so if I multiply that by 2 I'll get 2a plus 10d is equal to 46 I'm just going to write the other one underneath that 2a plus 9d is equal to 42 so we can see that we've got a common difference of 4. Now I can use that, sub it in, work out a. a plus 5 lots of 4 is equal to 23. I just used this one. So a plus 20 is 23, a is equal to 3. All right, so the sum of the first 20 terms, let's answer the question now is equal to n on 2, 20 on 2, because that's n now, 20 on 2 is 10, 2a, this is a, so 2 times 3 is 6, plus n minus 1, remember this is n, 19 times d, d is 4, put that in our calculator, and we will get an s of 820. Okay, last question. Evaluate the sum of this um, AP, 3R plus 2, where the first term is when R is equal to 1, and the last is when um, R is equal to 50. So, here because we've got this, we can think about it as working out what the first term is. The first term is when R is equal to 1, so 3 lots of 1 plus 2, which is 5. And the last term is the, is the 50th term, when r is 50, so we can do 3 loss of 50, plus 2, which is 152. And how many terms are there? Well, 50 minus 1 is 49, 49 plus 1, because we need to remember to add that one, is 50. Okay, so just get used to subtracting and adding 1. The reason why I say that is because what if this was 3? Then it will be 50 minus 3, which is 47, plus 1 is 48. So just get used to doing that. Alright, so because we had the first and last term, we can actually use that formula. S sub n is equal to um, n on 2 bracket a plus l. So the sum of the first 50 terms is equal to 50 on 2, which is 25, times a, which is 5, plus 152, which is l. And when we put that in our calculator, we get an answer of 3,925. Okay, and that's it for this video.